Hey everybody, Galusia here, and today I am joined with my nine-month-old daughter. You can say hi if you want. No? Okay. And today I'm going to be doing an off-the-cuff review of Astroneer. So for concept, uh, I feel like the concept is really good in the game. Um, the, the whole thing with you know having to get sent down to a planet, collect a lot of resources to travel to other planets... To get resources, you only, you can only get from those planets, and you know the the whole point of it of unlocking the cores and getting to the satellite and like doing all of that. I think the concept is really great. Um, certainly, there's been games that are kind of similar to it in certain ways, but um, I do think the game is really unique. But also within the concept category, I usually include story and. Um, there is a little bit of a story to this, but it's not really, not really. I mean, there's a, like at the very, very end when you watch the final cutscene, like you can kind of tell that there's a little bit of a story to it, but it's, there's not much there. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and say four out of five. So for graphics, I think the graphics in this game are perfect for what it is. Um, they're a little bit cutesy, but not like too cutesy. Um, you know, it's, it's really well drawn, and uh, everything has a pretty good design to it. Uh, I wish there was, a you know, a little bit more variety. The planets have a fair amount of variety to them. But then if you look at it closely, like, how much variety is there really? What's that on you? What's this? But overall, I think the graphics, the design, I think that's all really good. And I think that's probably worth a four as well. Uh, now, the sound is really straightforward. Like, the character just does sound like he never talks or anything like that, but he makes these great, like, mm -hmm. like <laughs> I don't know how else to describe them, but uh, they're very descriptive uh, for what they are. And then the other sound effects of the game for what they are, just the sound of, like, you sucking up stuff and things exploding and, like, all that stuff, I th it's all well executed. There's not too much sound, which I think makes sense because, you know, it's... You're an astronaut, you're in a spacesuit, and there shouldn't be excessive amounts of sound. Like, the lack of ambient sounds, for example, makes sense. There's not really any, there's no animal life, for example. So the lack of birds chirping and bug sounds and things like that, like, all that makes sense. Because all there is is plants, and we never see any kind of animal throughout the whole game. So, uh, for sound, I really can't think of anything not well executed uh, beyond maybe the need for in-game voice chat, which doesn't really seem very relevant uh, and would be nicer for multiplayer. Let's go ahead and give that a four. So for playability slash replayability. Well, playability is pretty good. The The whole thing of like, at least I'm, I'm reviewing the PC version specifically. Um... If I was reviewing any of the console versions, it would be a way different review. Because I've tried to play this game on Xbox, and for me, it's almost unplayable. Trying to select things using the an, an Xbox controller or any controller is a nightmare. But the on PC, it works pretty good. Using the mouse to click at what you want, and then dragging that item over to what you want to put it on, and then clicking again is very intuitive. It makes sense. Uh, you don't always grab what you want due to camera angles but i mean those problems are few and far between um there are a couple of like weird bugs here and there like i've i died um one time while teleporting and i really don't think i should have like i had plenty of oxygen left the game should have just teleported me but i got stuck in teleportation and suffocated um so that was kind of whack for replayability i mean i've spent dozens and dozens and dozens of hours playing this game and then finally got to the air quotes end of the game and we saw the end credits. And then, oh, okay. And then literally like a day or two after we beat the game, uh, Scale and I started doing a large project in Astroneer because we wanted to make like a very large, like, um, like a mega base in Astroneer and we started working on it. So it's not a game that we're tired of and it's something that we would continue to play just to pass our free time. So, uh, overall, I would say it's pretty good. Um, it's just, it's not flawless due to some of the bugs, so I'm going to give it a four. There's a lot of fours going on right now. The, the, there's a pattern for sure. I'm going to break that pattern right now, and I'm going to tell you right now that entertainment is a five. So, 
the game is incredibly entertaining. And the three of us had a lot of fun playing it together. We always looked forward to recording. Uh, we don't get a lot of time to play together due to the conflicts in our schedules and all of us being you know, grown men that have jobs and responsibilities. So on Sunday mornings, which is when we typically would record, we always really look forward to it. And it was always a good time. So entertainment, I'm going to say that is a five. So in the game category, uh, scored really high then, uh, 21 out of a possible 25. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so it scores really ho high in the game category, but I feel like the survival category is where it's going to take a hit. So right off the bat, both for the starvation category, your need for food, and dehydration, your need for uh, fluids, both of those score a zero, which is unfortunate, but uh, it is how it is. Yeah, starvation and dehydration are both going to score a zero. I mean, there's simply just no need for food or water in the game, which is really unfortunate. I think there would have been ways to work that in. Um, certainly astronauts need to do more than just breathe. So it, it would have been nice if they included some stuff like that, but they didn't. But obviously for asphyxiation, it easily gets a five. Uh, of all the survival games that probably exist where asphyxiation would be a gradable scorable thing in the game this one nails it the whole the only reason this really even becomes a survival game is because of asphyxiation that there's a constant need for oxygen on every single planet you need oxygen there's no place where you can walk around untethered and not eventually die from asphyxiation it's a constant threat it is the the main finite resource in this in this survival game that will kill you um, and it gets it really right. I mean, cause you can get oxygen from a lot of different sources, but at the end of the day, like it's mostly just due to you being tethered to something, you know, but being able to create the tethers or like vehicles generating oxygen for you or a base or the portable oxygen here, which is the only time you're not tethered to something cause it's directly on you, um, is, you know, all really like, there's just, there's a lot of ways to get oxygen and to continue to survive. Um, you know, you can make oxygen filters from commonly found resources for like a quick, you know, emergency fix. So they, they, they nailed that and they got that perfectly right. So that's a five. Now for fatigue, there really is none. You can pretty much sprint nonstop. Uh, and there's really no, there's nothing that would stop you from that. The only reason there's any score on fatigue literally at all is because when you go to carry something and by carry something, of course, I mean, well, carrying it, but also just having it floating in front of you with the mouse cursor. The larger the object, the slower you go, which plays into like real real world physics. Like the larger the item, the more difficult you have moving. That kind of ties into fatigue a little bit, but ultimately there really is no fatigue. So I'll give it a one just so that there's no like, it's not another zero, but I mean, I'm kind of reaching for that. And the last category for survival is the environmental, which is the shoehorn uh, category because there's a lot of little things I put in here. For survival environmental things like heat and cold dangerous gases and things like that none of that really exists in this game you know like you would th again i feel like that might be a missed opportunity like if you're on the solo that's a moon and there's really there's no atmosphere right so when you're on the the cold when you're on the dark side like when the sun's not hitting you it should be cold and when the sun's on you it should be hot and it'd be nice if either of those things happened and maybe you had to plan for that in some sort of a way, but you don't. So I feel like that's another missed opportunity. I think that's planned. Like, I think they wanted a little bit more simplistic game. They didn't want to overly complicate it, but certainly those survival elements are missing. But for like the building part of it, it's pretty good. Um, you can't build custom things like where you're putting walls together and stuff, but there's a lot of different things that you can build. Um, both, you know, with larger spaceships and with vehicles and with, um, you know, crafting like mods to make your tools better. And then just mostly storages, just all the different storage things that you can make and stuff. And you can configure them however you want. Man, you are just so talkative today, baby. I know, Astroneer is exciting. So there's a decent amount of building, but there's 
<laughs> just yelled at one of our cats. There's a decent amount of building, but there's really no environmental stuff. So I'm gonna give it a two, just because it does have some of those building elements, but I can't really give too many points for that category. So the survival category overall takes a huge nosedive. It only scores an eight uh, when you add it all up. And then again, that's just from the lack of other survival elements besides asphyxiation. So even though I think this is a great game, and I feel like, because the forest uh, review is going to come out right after this and just a few days later, I feel like, you know, with this one scoring a 29 out of 50, there's a chance that the forest might score higher just because of, you know, they have most of the survival elements and the survival category is going to score really high. I mean, if but on the surface of it, like just for me, like I personally feel like Astroneer was a better and more entertaining game to play than The Forest. But in terms of pure review and how I structured that, I think uh, I think I think it's a fair score and reflects how good of a survival game it is. So 29 out of 50 is the score for Astroneer. But uh, makers of Astroneer don't let that get you down, and the fact that you're not in the 40s or higher this is a fantastic game and one that i highly recommend that you play on your own it's very rewarding yeah tell them how rewarding it is tell them tell them baby no don't drool on the mic just tell them how rewarding it is okay you're done <laughs> so thank you everybody i i really appreciate all the views throughout the astroneer series um the astroneer series was a lot of fun for the three of us and then uh, keep an eye out for the new Conan series because that'll be starting in a week. We've already started recording for it. Yeah. So far, so good with Conan. I think it's going to be great. So um, keep an eye out for it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate the view and support as always. And I will see you next time.